Howdy y'all, welcome back. If you are as interested in old world mysterious architecture as I am, then today you are in for a real treat. It's not often that I'm truly taken back by something that I find, but when I came across this island castle in my research, it completely blew me away. The preposterous design, the fact the entire island is, and for as long as we have depictions, has been fortified, only added to my intrigue. I browsed through hundreds of photographs related to this topic, diving into French museums and historical societies to bring you today Mont Saint Michael, a tidal island and fortified commune in Normandy, France. Yesterday, we covered Belgium, and amongst the lavish history of Antwerp, we have a Norman invasion, which led me down the path of research into the land that became Normandy. There's so much beauty to be found throughout the old world, but to find architecture and a design which I have never seen before, I truly had to share Mont St. Michael with you. As of the year 2001, the island only has 29 residents, the majority of which are monks and nuns from the monastic fraternities of Jerusalem, who replaced the original nuns who had been in this church for centuries. Honestly, the history and the structure here are both absolutely wild, so click your seatbelts and let's dive in. First and foremost, the island is named for St. Michael the Archangel, who according to biblical text, defeated and imprisoned the devil. Many locations worldwide, including Archangel Russia, have myths and legends which identify them as the location where this mythical battle between good and evil occurred. What's interesting about Mont St. Michael in France is that according to the narrative, before the island had any fortifications, it was known as Grave Mountain. Diving deeper into the French legend, the Archangel Michael was said to have appeared to St. Aubert in the year 708, instructing him to build a church on the location where Michael had defeated the devil, the rocky and steep, one and a half square mile, 280 foot tall island. Interestingly, the myths and the legends aside, many still believe that the devil is trapped below the church, while others say the rocky island itself are the petrified remains poking out of the water. Speaking of poking, we're told St. Albert at first ignored his vision until St. Michael appeared to him again, this time in frustration. In an attempt to convince Albert to complete his task, the archangel reached out with one finger and touched Albert on the face. This great power left a small hole in Albert's skull, which never healed. Apparently after this, Albert completed his church with haste. Now this is all biblical myth, but what followed was the full fortification of the small island with some immense and meticulous architecture. Saint Albert himself is immortalized in the Saint Gervais Cathedral, where his skull, said to be complete with the hole that never healed, is on display within one of the most advanced looking pieces of old world gold antiquitech I have ever seen. Diving into the accepted history further, we're told after completing this nearly impossible church and fortification, the Norman Albert was unable to defend his creation from the imposing Vikings. Eventually, the island was ceded to the Bretons, who are said to have never fully claimed the island, leaving the church empty for over 100 years. William Longsword, the second official ruler of unified Normandy, retook the island of Mont St. Michael in 933 effectively returning the island to the glory it previously achieved 200 years earlier. Another fun fact here, showing how impossible this island was to reach, we're told depicted on the 1066 Bayou Tapestry, commemorating the Norman conquest of England. There is a depiction of Mont St. Michael with two soldiers that are drowning in the apparent quicksand which surrounded the island castle. We're told only one buried fortified pathway existed that was only visible or passable at low tide. Unless you knew where this fortified path was, you would not be able to access the island. And even those who knew the pathway would not try to enter or leave the island during high tide. It was a perfect strategic location. Yet, can we truly believe this island castle was created under the auspices of worship as opposed to defense? Throughout the subsequent centuries, the fortifications, including the tunnels of Mont St. Michael, were advanced by the Norman people, as the site held strategic importance to the Normans' conquest. We're told by 1067, more defensive structures had been built as the monastery gave their support 
to William the Conqueror, which he rewarded by giving the monastery additional lands on the English side of the channel. By the time of the Hundred Years' War, the Kingdom of England made numerous attempts to conquer Mont St. Michael, with every attempt failing due to the island's superior defenses. Two of many sieges occurred in 1423 and 1433, respectively. The bombards, used to breach the castle walls and then abandoned when the breach failed, still sit on Mont St. Michael today, 600 years later. The defense of Mont St. Michael was said to have inspired Joan of Arc. When Louis XI of France founded the dynastic order of chivalry, known as the Order of St. Michael, in 1469, he intended Mont St. Michael to be the order's headquarters. However, due to the distance from Paris, his dream was never realized. By the time of Reformation, we're told the island was overgrown and underpopulated. The only residents being a few hundred monks. By the French Revolution, this number had dwindled below 100. This is when the French government converted the ancient and holy site into a political prison. Eventually, the prison of Mont Saint Michael was advanced to hold the most dangerous criminals in all of France. In 1836, we're told Victor Hugo, amongst other French notables, implored the French government to close the prison and restore the ancient and most important holy site back to its original glory. This campaign initially had very little success, however, through perseverance, the prison was finally closed in 1863. It seems the island was then abandoned. In 1872, the highly overgrown and dilapidated island castle was under official assessment by Edard Corriere the French government architect for historic monuments. After a two-year assessment, Mont St. Michael was officially classified as a historic monument, and some of the most intense restoration in French history took place as Edard Corriere himself dedicated his life to the resurrection of the church. During World War II, the Germans occupied Mont St. Michael from 1940 through August of 1944. During this time, Mont St. Michael became a major German tourist attraction, with over a quarter million Germans visiting the island. After D-Day, many of the Germans retreated to the secure walls of Mont St. Michael. In August of 1944, the island was officially retaken by the Allies. In 1979, Mont St. Michael was officially listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it was listed with the criteria of cultural, historical, and architectural significance, as well as human-created and natural beauty. And that's it. We've basically gone through the official current narrative history of Mont Saint Michael in Normandy, France. But I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Obviously, as we look through this architecture, it's hard to imagine that all of this arose simply under the auspices of being a church, even if that church was said to be the location where the Archangel Michael had defeated the devil. It still becomes almost impossible to imagine this architecture arising in the year 900 or the year 1000, even the year 1400, to have a castle built directly into a mountain that itself is in the ocean. It's almost impossible to picture the building techniques, the architecture arising, especially when we are under the impression that it was not being done by necessarily skilled laborers, but it was being built by the monks themselves. Now, what makes this really fascinating to me, what makes it stand out from the rest of the architecture that I've looked at in the last couple of months is all of the architecture shown in these artistic depictions is the architecture that we pretty much see today. Meaning, for lack of a better term, this hasn't been reset or it hasn't been renovated to the point that we are seeing something different than what we see in the oldest depictions. Now, why I mention this is because we have more recent artistic depictions that are intending to show what this island looked like in the year 1000 and shortly after that showing what it looked like before this castle arose. Now, this was done to try to project onto us the idea that this castle was built through many hundreds of years, through many different rebuilds, and it did not stand as it does today 
back in the year 1000 that it took many centuries for the castle to arise to what we see today. However, we have artistic depictions from around that time period from 13, 14, 1500s from those centuries that are showing the castle being pretty much what it looks like today. So we have to argue who was correct, the people that saw the castle in person and drew it back in the 14, 15, and 1600s, or the artists and scholars and historians today who might be looking to give us a different history than the one that we can find when we truly look at the core of this castle. Can we look at this structure in front of us and see a castle, see a kingdom, see a whole different side to the narrative than the one that we've been presented with. We have these models that go through what we're told were the renditions or the different builds of this castle, of the church and the surrounding buildings. Nowadays, the entire island has over 60 unique buildings, which most of them are interconnected by different pathways and even underground passages and caves. All of these 60 buildings are protected as World Heritage Sites. But as we look through really the history of this building, from the first versions, from the first artistic depictions, we have at least, I'd say, 20 of these buildings standing here. Now, these are artistic depictions that were created more recently to showcase the advancement of the castle, meaning that these could be plausible deniability. These could be different things that were created to make us believe that there was a long drawn out process of creating this castle on the island. But realistically, the earliest depictions of the castle show all of the walls in place, all of the defensive structures, and all of the beauty that would have to be done by some of the most advanced architects in the world. And that's why I wanted to share Mont St. Michael with you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.